this is yours. We are not in control, but you are, because when we give you control, everything else flows from that. And Father, we can walk in peace. We can walk in grace. We can walk in all the things that you have for us. Father, the love will flow from us because we will be more like you, and we will show love. We will show patience. We will show all of the fruit that you have given us will flow from a place of just being in your presence and being in your Father, I just want to say in your lap, just up against you. And you just take it all away from us. If we can just understand how easy it is. We make it so complicated, but Father, it's so easy to just say, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender all of my will. I surrender all of my all of my control, which is so hard, but it's so easy at the same time to just say, I give you control. When we give you control, then you're able to give us peace because we're no longer hanging on to the things that we wanted to control. Now we are free to have peace and to walk in peace and to know that you have already paved the way, that you already did everything. You're just waiting for us to give it to you so we can see the path. Father, I thank you for unveiled eyes this morning. I thank you for unveiled eyes. I thank you that all idols are gone, but that you are you are number one. You are the only one. Father, there is no one above you. There is no one like you, but you are God. You are my God, and there is no other. You are my Abba. There is no other. There is only you. There is only you. I thank you. I thank you for that. I thank you for peace. I thank you for peace that is beyond all understanding. I thank you for that because you've given it to me and I thank you for that. I thank you for freedom. I thank you for freedom to love. I thank you for freedom to love even when those have hurt me that I can still love because you loved me. You loved me when I didn't put you first. You still loved me. And I'm so thankful for that love. I'm so thankful for that love. When I don't have a father, you are my father. When I don't have the love of a mother, you are my mother. When I don't have love of a family, you are my family. You are everything, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that love.
struggling with something this morning, or you're you're struggling with giving control, if you're if you're struggling with surrender, if you need anything, this whole area is open up here. I encourage you to just come up and seek His face, because He will show you the way. He, he's here this morning to help, and all you have to do is step out. This whole area is open. If you want to grab someone, if you need someone to pray with you, there's. There's plenty of prayer warriors here. But I feel like this is the time that if you just need something, that you should you should make your way up here and just seek his face.
in this attitude of worship and surrender goes with what I was getting early on. It, I'm going to read from Psalm 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Jesus, Yeshua, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up you everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory, Selah. The King of glory is here. 
Yeah, you can amen that. That's, a, that's worth a praise. I felt like early um, the particular part, who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. I felt like there was a battles going on in here, but not all of them are overt and really big. They don't have to be like catastrophic battles, though maybe some of us are facing those. But I felt like the small things we are to surrender because sometimes we don't bring those to him because eh, it's not significant, it's not spiritual, it's this or that. But I'm here to tell you, God is in the small things, he's in the big things, and what is important to you is important to him. And this is a teachable moment. And I believe that the altar, and he also showed me, yes, I know there is an act of perf- there's a prophetic act of stepping out and coming up here. But this is just a symbol. He showed me that the altars of the hearts in this room is where he's, his fire is falling, is on the altar of your heart. So I just want to release that word that he's here, King of glory, Yeshua. He's in this place. We don't have to beg him. We don't have to. We just worship. That's what all we've been doing is just lifting up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, worshiping him and his holiness and his beauty and his splendor and his wonder. Don't don't lose the wonder and the mystery. Don't let it become familiar. He he's not familiar. He's a mystery. He's it, it's an awe and it, like he says, it's a great and dreadful thing to come and to fall into the hands of the mighty God. Like there's an awe and reverence, but then he's our daddy. There's all those aspects of him. He's strong and mighty in battle, but he's also gentle and lowly and picks us up. Let's just keep the mystery in our heart and in our spirit of who he is amongst us. And I think... Thank you for your word, Jesus. God's doing such amazing things in the room. And I want to just continue to flow into that. Um, And I don't know. I told Haley just to hang out with me for a little while because I don't know where all we're going from here. Um, And... uh, But I, I I have some things that are... Uh, that I'm just seeing like uh, just some things that I'm seeing, some things I'm seeing in the atmosphere some people for some people in the room and and I, and I want to I want to release that. I want to release that uh, just just some individual words and 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 sometimes oftentimes, um, release individual ro- words when I'm when I'm praying when I'm praying for people, and and a lot of times I release them over the microphone like this. And at any point in that, especially when they're going forth like this, like this right here over the microphone, even if the word is not necessarily directed to you, but it strikes the chord within your spirit. You're, you see, you are you are like a, a walking tuning fork. And heaven is releasing a frequency. And when it comes into alignment with the frequency that's in your spirit, those tuning forks will begin to sing to one another. 
and you'll come into a greater degree of alignment or a revelation or an illumination, whatever that it is, of what the Father's wanting to release in you in that moment. So sometimes when somebody, now listen, I don't even, like if, if two people are in the prayer line standing side by side and somebody starts prophesying over the person next to you, but it jives with the tuning fork of your spirit, then you have permission to latch on to that. Because what, I mean, why do you think you were standing at that spot at that moment unless it was like, like it was, well, it was just a coincidence. I just overheard their word. No, no, no. You overheard your word too. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get a different word at that, that the, the next, you know, the, at the next prayer moment that you're not going to get a different word. But I'm saying if that, if that jives with you, that's why, that's why the, the testimonies of faith builds up faith in the room even though they might not be your stories, but there's somebody else's story of God's glory manifesting in their life and it builds up your faith. And there are people that get healed by hearing the testimony of somebody else's healing. So why, why does it have to be just about healing? Why can't it be about I begin to hear this about somebody else. And as I heard that, it began to hit the tuning fork of my spirit. Now, I'm not talking about the word that you just wanted to hear. I said, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that you begin to hear a word. It wasn't directed to you, but it began to, it began to stir within you. Hang on to that. Hold fast to it. Latch on. Latch on to that word and let it, and let it uh, be a word to you. How good is a word in season? A word's always good, but a word right in that season of where you're at. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to, uh, so I'm going to release a couple things, just some, and this may be, I, I, just like I told Haley, just hang out. I don't know where all we're going from here. The Lord is doing such unique things in the room. We could go home right now as if somebody, like, don't, don't think that I got up here to take you to a better place than where we already are. are you, I need you to hear that. Don't think I got up here to take you to a better place. You're already, he inhabits the praise of his people. You're already in throne rooms right now. You're in throne, I can't help it if you don't see it yet, but you're already there. You're, all, you're already there. So I didn't, I didn't come to say, oh, here, we're going to this other place that's better than where we are. No, see, when you're in, th- I, I'm here to bring you things that are already, that are already in the atmosphere of the throne rooms that you're inhabiting and, and that, you're a, that you're a part of in this moment. So I'm just, I'm just hearing some things from heaven because his thoughts are so numerous, as we heard last week. His thoughts are so numerous towards us. He's got more thoughts about us than the average seconds of a person's life. So God doesn't have talking problems. Oftentimes we have hearing issues. And when we, when we let our spiritual ears be clean to hone in on the thoughts of the Father, that's why it's not an issue for us to, we could go around the room and we could hear. It, there's, there's, giftings already, there's giftings already in this room. We are giftings that are already in this room to where we can hear something for everybody today. It's most effective when God's highlighting something to you. It's most effective. Not that, not that, no, let me, let me say that, okay? It's most effective. That doesn't mean, we can go to Walmart right now if you wanted to, and, and you could send me down any aisle you want. You can point out any, we can go to whatever restaurant you want. You can point somebody out and I can go prophesy that person. As scary as that may sound, I can go prophesy to them. That doesn't mean God highlighted them to me. It means you highlighted them to me. But there's still still an anointing in my life to flow in some things, to flow in some things, and we can start praying for somebody. It doesn't matter who we start praying for. If I start praying for them, I'm going to start seeing something. I'm going to start hearing something. Because that's how how God, I'm not saying he flows that way in your life. I don't know. It's how he flows in mine. I believe he flows that way in yours because it's not just, it's not just, listen, everybody can prophesy. Everybody can prophesy. It's not, it's not just for this elite one or that elite one. No, it's for everybody to prophesy. Man, even the heathen in the scripture, they sent him out to curse the people of God and he opened up his mouth and he prophesied blessing. 
Man, y'all forgot about that story. All right, so I want to I release a couple things in the room. Miss Bonnie, right back here. <laughs> I felt the Lord, I, I had to look up your name. I felt the Lord just wanted just, and, and maybe you already know, but he just wanted to remind you, remind you and just let you know that your name means beautiful. Its inherent meaning is beautiful and it means pure in heart. And that's very much the, the scripture that Sherry was releasing out of, out of uh, Psalm, Psalm 24 just a little bit ago. It, does, it When she was talking about the gates, lift up your heads, you ancient gates, lift up, your, swing wide, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The God of battles, the Lord of hosts, the commander of angel armies. That's, that's who he is. The start of that whole scripture is this. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and pure hearts. And your name, your name is inherently beautiful, but it means pure in heart. Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8 for you. What bliss you experience in the Passion Translation. What bliss you experience when your heart is pure. For then your eyes will open to see more and more of God. Your eyes will open to see more and more of God. There is an unending well of heaven that has your name on it, Bonnie. And it's not just, it's, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a well for somebody else, but he has specifically. See, see, sometimes we think that when, I, especially the way I was talking earlier, when we give out the language or you heard a word and, and you thought that was for them, but no, no, it, it jived with you and you can hang on to it. But everything that God gives you is tailor-made. And he has a tailor-made well for you. He has, a, he has a garment for you. And it doesn't fit like an overcoat, but it is specifically designed, tailored for you. It's the perfect fit. And he wants to let you see more and more of him than you ever have before. Even the, even the, 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 the denoting of your name the deno is inscribed on this. I see your name just inscribed on a well. It's like, this is reserved for you. Reserved for you. And I see you just coming into alignment with that. And, the, and you're just like, you're just like, like I just see you just, you're so satisfied because you drink from the wells of heaven. You drink from the wells of heaven. It doesn't mean that you won't drink from any other wells, but he's like, no, this one's got Bonnie's name on it. And he's reserved it for you. He's reserved it for you. And you're gonna walk in it. And things are just gonna start coming into place. You're gonna find more satisfaction than in any previous season of your life because you're gonna be more rooted than in any other previous season. It doesn't mean that you don't go from a place to a place. It means that you're rooted in who that you are. You're coming in such alignment with who that you are that the heavens are even declaring, they're declaring that over you. Bonnie, this is, Bonnie, this is, they're just th those whispers of heaven that are just coming to you and he's saying, just continue to drink of this and it's gonna bring greater satisfaction than you've ever seen. Just as I read to you, Matthew 5, 8, there's another one right shortly after that. Blessed are them that hunger and thirst for my righteousness. They will be satisfied. And you're gonna, you're gonna, you have such hunger and thirst for him. And it's gonna bring just, just, just ridiculous satisfaction to your life in all things. It doesn't mean that everything's always, it doesn't mean all the ducks are always in a row. It means that even when some of them aren't, you're finding satisfaction in what the Lord is pouring to you and what he's pouring to you. He's not spilling anything on you. He's pouring everything on you and it's on purpose, with purpose. Bonnie, this is who you are. A woman, a woman so satisfied in the glory of the Lord. So satisfied. Even in your heart crying out, there's no place I'd rather be. There's no, that, that Rick Pino song, I hear that just echoing in your heart. I don't know if you've ever heard it and I don't even know if I, I'm not gonna sing it because you know that wouldn't be glorious at all. Uh, but there's no place I'd rather be here in your presence, here in your presence. Set a fire within my heart that I cannot contain, that I cannot control. I want more of you, oh God. There's no place I'd rather be. I don't know if that's the bridge, the course, whatever. There's technical terms for that. But there's no place I'd rather be but here in your presence here in your presence. Yeah. That's so good. So good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, Father. Um, well, just give me, uh, hey, Sherry, I want you just to come, just, just flow with me in the, in the, uh, I want you to go back there and pray for Bonnie. Right here. 
That's just one. Do you know which one she is right here that I'll speak into? And I want the other Sherry to join you right over here. Just Sherry squared right there. And we're going to we're gonna get that and just pray over it. We're praying over Bonnie right there. And I'm, I'm just going to keep flowing in some things while y'all, while y'all are praying there. Because there's this other lady over here. Angel, who's this person sitting beside you? This blonde, blonde right here beside you. What's your name? Kim. Kim, there's such a deep well in you, Kim. There's such a deep well in you. Are, are y'all, are you, is this a friend of yours, Angel? Because I feel like she just wards for you. I feel like she wars for you and, and such a deep, such a deep, deep well in you. Bonnie, I don't know what you do, but I just see you just sitting at the desk and you're such an administrator. And I just see, I, I saw like, like from all 10 of your fingers, I saw solutions coming out of them. Like with every keystroke, I don't know if you answer a ton of emails or people send you dreams or, or people, people come to you with issues, but I just see, I just see solutions coming out of you like lightning. And, and with every keystroke, there is a solution. With every keystroke, I just see solutions and, 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 and you just bringing, and you just bringing, um, and the Lord wants me to use this word because maybe it means something to you, but I just hear the word recompense with, with solutions and you're just bringing a word of recompense to people's life and you bring such encouragement because, because when they get, and I don't know if it's emails or text messages or what, but just like lightning from your fingertips that you bring people words in season and it is such a ripe fruit in you because you have such, such, a, such a deep well in you that is, that is so magnificent of what the Father is doing and there is just solutions that are coming out of your heart. Solutions. It is not just what you think. I see that you have that you have I, like, I don't even know who you are, lady, but I just see that you have just, you have so pushed past the realms of logic and reason that when you speak, you don't even want to speak out in terms of logic and reason, but you speak in terms of kingdom and heaven. And when you speak in those terms, you're bringing people answers to their in their moments. You're bringing them such encouragement in their seasons of whatever that they're going through. Like, they're just like with every keystroke, solutions are happening. And they're it's like it's being like with every keystroke there's a word being formed and that word has purpose and it's on purpose and and he won't even sometimes let you use your own language but he but he has you he has you like in your when I say your own language your own words that you're wanting to use and he says like nope you can't use that word you're going to use this word it's like you're a, it's like there's just a divine counseling that's over you to release to release counseling into others and he's just graced you with that it drips from your life because your well is so deep in that and you just need to be you, you should be so encouraged Bonnie you, or not Bonnie or Kim Bonnie's over here Kim you should be so encouraged because because um, the Lord's just wanting to encourage you today in that all the encouragement that you have released not one of those seeds are falling to the ground but he sees that they're all coming back to you I see them all coming back to you all coming back to you like the seeds every seed that you've released like that every seed of encouragement that you released it's went into their life and the Lord said that it just because it didn't manifest in them the way that you saw it doesn't mean that it wasn't a valid seed. He said, none of those seeds are void. And I see every seed that left the key stroke and every seed that left your mouth turn into a boomerang and it came back to you. It came back to you after it multiplied and it grew and it came back in a great reward in your own life. And I thank you, God, for that. I thank you, Father, for doing that in Kim. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where's Maria at? Is Maria in here? I'm looking. Where's her? Oh, she's sitting right there. I was going to have you pray for that lady. You're already prepared. Right there. You pray for that lady. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You will live in that scripture, Kim. You'll live in that scripture of um, weeping endureth a moment, but joy's coming in the morning. But joy's coming in the morning. Joy's coming in the morning. Joy's coming in the morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right. Hmm? Say that oh, for, for Kim. Haley up here is hearing a word of overcomer. 
overcomer for you. Overcomer. I actually... Got another? Can you hear? Okay. Sorry, Jake's working on it. Um, I keep hearing over, over, overcomer. That's what I keep hearing over you, over whatever situation that it is. We'll just sing that for a little bit then. Come on, stretch your hands, sword cam, right here. You're an overcomer. Over all things. Over all things. That's good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Lord's highlighting these people right over here. And I'm sorry to call you these people. I, I've not, I don't I have no idea who you are. So uh, what, what's this guy's name right here with the Jesus freak shirt on? I, I didn't, what? Casey, man, dude, Casey. I'm glad you're here, man. Hey, where's where's uh, where's Tim at? Where you at? Oh, dude, man. It's, uh, Tim, you're going to pray for Casey, okay? And, uh, uh, Casey, there's just, just such an amazing thing happening in you. Um, the Lord is just bubbling up such revelation in you, uh, greater than than previous days. In Genesis chapter number, in Genesis chapter number two, verse number ten, it says that there's a singular river that flows from the Garden of God that branched into four rivers, and and it, call, it calls them out by name. And 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 the 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 Hebrew of those names is is basically that that God is wanting to that God is wanting to bring his people into a great accelerated success for his glory and his delight. 
God's people of delight are coming into great, overwhelming success, gushing like a geyser, gushing, erupting like a geyser, erupting like a geyser in an accelerated fashion to see great fruit and great success. And so that's, uh, and, I, and I'm paraphrasing that. There's, I didn't give you the exact definition there, uh, but that's, that's Genesis chapter two, verse number 10, talking about that river. But it says that there's a singular river branching into four branches and that, and it impacts the known world. And then in the, in the revelation of Christ, it says that there is a river that flows from the Lamb of God and the throne of God. The Lamb of God and the throne of God. It says of the heavens, it says there is a river whose streams make glad the people of God. That's the psalmist declaring that. And I just feel like that the Lord's saying over you that that river flows very strongly in you. And you're gonna become more immersed in the river that flows from the Lamb of God and the throne of God, from the garden of God. And it's gonna produce fruit in everywhere. I see you just such a fruitful person. I don't know if you've been fruitful in the past and you've came into moments of drought and lack, whatever that is. But if that is the case, then I'm telling you that that season is now over, whatever's going on there. Because I see you just being inserted into places that are desolate and desert. I see you going into desert places and it becomes lush green gardens. And I see you just wherever that you go. It does not matter. Just like, it doesn't matter where it is on the map. You could literally spin the globe, Casey, and you could put your finger on any country you wanted. And wherever that it was, it doesn't matter if it's first world, second world, third world, wherever that you go, no matter, I I don't care if you find yourself in the Sahara, but if you find yourself there, he's gonna flourish you like a garden because you are one that is completely immersed in the river of God, in the river of God, as your shirt is, as your shirt is. So, so you are, you are a Jesus freak that there's something on the inside of you. And I just see such a sound on your innermost being and that sound that is being released. You're going to be such, you're going to be so influential to people around you in small circles in large circles, whatever that it is. You just, I do like, you can't go anywhere, Casey and fruit not come come out of it. Wherever you put your foot down, fruit's going to happen. Fruit's going to happen. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be discernment of things that God takes you in and does in your life, but I'm saying that the river of God just flows so strongly in you, and he's, He's just developing. I see just a developing revelation that's flowing out of you that's greater than any previous day. Any previous day, I see moments where, where in previous days we're like, man, God was really, he's really speaking to you, really speaking to you and really speaking through you. But there's such a sound that is coming from your innermost being that you're gonna be such a man of God of influence. Whatever work environment, whatever ministry environment, whatever, whatever purpose and environment that you're in, whatever purpose and environment that you're in, that you are gonna flourish, you're gonna flourish. Psalm chapter number one, you are gonna be a never withering leaf. You won't be, you're not subject to any seasons. You are not subject to seasons. You have the river of heaven flowing on the inside of you. And that river is not dependent upon how much rain is in the earth. That river is dependent on you, on you coming in union with what's already flowing on the inside of you and what he's already put on the inside of you. There is such revelation. There is such revelation and giftings that the Lord is stirring up on the inside of you and such a sound that is going to affect those that come in contact with you. People people just want to Gonna, they just want to be around you, Casey. They want to be around you. They want to be around you. No matter what it is, man. They just want people, people, they don't, there's people that aren't even of the same faith of you. And they're going to want to be around you because you exude something from another realm. And that thing is speaking to them whether they even know it or not. And you're bringing influence into others' life. You're bringing influence into other people's lives because of you, because of you just being so emerged in that river, in that river, in that river. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Tim, just just minister to him, Tim, right right there where he's at. Just begin to pray over him. And I know sometimes I pray for people after I speak over them, uh, but today we're sending people out for that. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for that in Casey. Emerged in your river. Emerged in your river. Casey's such a man of God of influence. Man of God of influence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
What's this girl next to him? What's, what's her name? Leslie. Okay, Leslie. Leslie, you have such a strong gift of intercession on the inside of you, Leslie. And uh, what's it? I want to say this right. Help me if I'm wrong, Robin. The word is, is what is it? Metadidomy? That's a, that's a metadidomy. Metadidomy. Uh, so people have gifts, and we say that people have gifts, but the word metadidomy is the, is the Greek word, correct? Greek word? Greek word metadidomy doesn't mean that you have a gift. It means you are the gift. And Leslie, you are, a, you are the gift of joy. You are the gift of joy. And, and, I, and I heard the Lord while you, while I, I saw you up here. I don't, I don't really, I don't know where you're from or anything, but I, or what you do. But I don't know what you do, but I just, the Lord, he just spoke this to me. He said, passion for fashion. And, and, and I was just hearing that word, passion for fashion. And I could just, I don't know if you like, like going to like boutiques and things, if I even say it, or boutique, whatever, we're in Arkansas, uh, but boutique. Uh, and I don't know if you like going to those things or, 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 um, or what your involvement maybe has been, but I see like in a spiritual, in a spiritual boutique and you're just so, you're just passion for fashion and you're just the things that heaven has for you. You're just so enamored by the, by the colors and the vibrance of what the Father is wanting to point up, put, is wanting to, to put on you and put on you and put on your life, and and it's and, it, and it's just such a radiate thing, a radiate thing uh, that that come that comes off of you, and and the Lord, like at a, He's saying, you're such an artist. I don't know if you actually paint or if you if you draw or if you do any of that. Do you paint? I don't know because I see you painting, but I don't know if you do. You do paint? Okay, you need to, and I don't. Maybe you're already doing this, but you need to just turn that word worship music up and you need to start painting in the in the atmosphere of worship because there is prophetic paintings that are that are on you and that are, that are supposed to come out of you and you and you're such a treasure of joy you are metadidomy you are you are joy where that you go you are joy the lord says where you're weak i'm going to make you strong where you're weak and I'm going to make you strong and he said the joy of the lord is going to strengthen you but that's who you are it's not just the joy that strengthens you. You are the joy of the Lord and you will strengthen others. And I just see just such an artistry that comes out of you, like a spiritual boutique, but it's like a it's just like you're just you're just going from rack to rack and like you just can't get enough. You just can't get enough like like a, you have a passion for fashion and it's heaven's fashion and and you just can't get enough things in your cart here. You can't you just it's not even a cart. You're just putting them, draping them over your arm and like I can't I can't I can't even carry it all because you're just wanting to you're just wanting to try all these all these things and and the Lord's saying that this this you don't have to pick out the father says to you Leslie that you don't have to pick out a single thing saying I like that he's saying look at the entire boutique it all belongs to you this is Leslie's boutique this is Leslie's boutique and it all belongs to you Leslie you're such an artist and you and, and such a gifting to others such a gifting to others and I see such a passion for fashion but a passion for health in you and um a passion for health and I just see the Lord saying that you're going to be like a medicine to others you the, the, like you you bring you you bring joy and laughter to others and laughter is good like a medicine but i just see where you're bringing joy to others and you're bringing healing to others i see you bringing healing to others in a way and maybe you already do this maybe you're going to do this i don't know but you bring a healing to others and i just see other people that are coming to you in pain and they're leaving you out of healing there there there's a healing that's flowing out of you they come to you in pain and the joy of the Lord brings healing to them while, while they're people, God's just bringing, bringing wounded people to you and out of their wounds, you are going to be such a metadidomy, a gift that brings, you are the gift of healing to them and that you're going to bring healing. I just see you just like stitching up old wounds that people that people went to church and they got no answers for but they came to Leslie and you just stitched them up they went to the oh god they went to other they went to religion and they couldn't find the answer but they went to Leslie and they found heaven and they found heaven and you're just going to stitch that thing up in them and it's going to be such a beautiful thing a passion for fashion and healing and healing in others and and it's going to be it's going to be you will, you will doubtless come again. Where's that word? 
Ah. Psalm Psalm 126, verse number six. They may weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow, but they will turn with joyful laughter and shouting with gladness as they bring back armloads of blessing and harvest overflowing. Leslie, you have came into the kingdom for such a time as this. And I hear this word specifically as relief. I hear the word relief over you. As, as people as people send, as even as government sends relief to other countries, you bring relief to other people. You've came into the kingdom for such a time as this. And Lord has designed, divinely designed you to bring relief into other people's, into other people's pain. You're bringing relief into their pain. You're bringing relief into their pain and they're going to come back. They're going to leave you with armloads of harvest and armloads of joy because you deposit the things of heaven into their life. That's who you are, Leslie. You are a gift of heaven that deposits healing into other people and the Lord is so pleased with that and so delighted in that and so so he's so fascinated with your with your passion for those things and and he's and he's bringing those people on a assignment for you on assignment for you man I just feel that so sorry what religion couldn't do Leslie did what religion couldn't do it all belonged to you Leslie and you're just handing it out and you're just you're just stitching those things up such an artist to paint the pictures of heaven on the canvas of others hearts that's who that's what you do that's what you do thank you Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit man Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Father, for that. Ah, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Thank you for that. I'm not sending anybody to pray for you, Leslie. I already did. I already did earlier. I sent Sherry over to you while you were down here, and I said, Sherry, go pray for that lady. She's like you. And uh, that's what I told her. I don't know where Sherry went, but that's what I told her. I said, Sherry, go pray for that lady right over there. She's like you. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man. Man, 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 man. I just, I just pray just for a little bit. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, there's been too much distance between, between Abba and us, but we declare no more distance. No more distance. You won't have to shout instruction to us. We'll hear the whisper because we're in your lap. We're seated. We're seated at your right hand. We're seated as sons, as sons and daughters at your right hand, intimately intertwined with the whisper of heaven's heartbeat. So, Father, I thank you that there's no separation between us. There's no separation between us, Abba. We belong to you. We belong to you. We are yours and you are mine. God, you are ours. We are yours, God. You are our Father. You are our Father, Abba, and I thank you. I thank you for the healing of heaven that's in the room. I thank you for the word of the Lord that's in the room. I thank you, God, for the quickening, God for the quickenings that are all over the room, God. Some of them spoke to just like that. Some of them latched on to some of that, Lord. And I thank you for the quickening that's in the room, God, of exactly what you wanted to release, God, and exactly what you wanted to say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No more distance. No more distance. You're not, a, you're not an agnostic God, that's withdrawn from your creation. But we are in it. We are in a seamless, everlasting union with you. You didn't set us out, Lord, to see what happens, God, but you are inter intricately intertwined and woven in lockstep with us, God, reserving and preserving every step we take as ordained, as you set us apart, God, to take those ordained steps. Abba, we belong to you as sons and daughters. You don't let your children just go whatever way they want, but you train up the children in the way that they should go. 
And so, Father, I thank you as a good father that you've been training us up in the ways of life that you have divinely designed for us. I give you glory for it, Father. I give you glory for it, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Huh? We'll bring him up here. We'll pray for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you, Father. Man. We got a kid needing prayed for. Yeah, stretch your hand short. This is Owen up here. This is Owen, and he's awesome. He's awesome. He likes to worship the Lord. He likes to worship the Lord. Kaysen, you're going to come pray for him. Yeah. Just lay your hand on him, Kaysen. Stretch your hands toward Owen. Yeah. Yeah. Shabakotolalabasaya. Oh, Lord, we speak and release healing over Owen. And we say, Lord, just a renewal in his mind. A renewal in his mind. A renewal in his mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Lord, I just pray healing at the thought level. As the enemy's trying to plant seeds, we say those seeds have no root, but the, only the seeds of Abba, only the seeds of Abba are allowed to grow in the garden of Owen's mind. And I thank you, Lord, for absolute freedom over him. Absolute freedom over him. Healing flow, healing flow on earth as it is in heaven in the thought life of Owen. On earth as it is in heaven in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Guys, if y'all see anything for Owen, just begin to release that to him. If you see any pictures for him, if you see the Father, if you hear the Father saying something, see the Father. Yeah. God's raising up some things. He's raising up some things. As they begin, when I said, Kaysen, come here, and these others came, came up here, and I felt the Father just checking my spirit, and he said, no kid left behind is about to take on a brand new meaning. No kid left behind is about to take on a brand new meaning. And it's not just going to be educational things that they use that terminology in, but in the things of the Spirit where others come and take them by the hand and say, we're not willing to leave you here. We're not willing to leave you here. We're not willing to leave you here. But they're standing with him, standing with him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Look at his family all around him. These are all his family. This is Owen's family right here. This is Owen's family right here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have something? Come on, come on. The Lord began to picture to me a little earlier as we were speaking, praying, the Lord began to talk to me about the black holes of abandonment, that there were people literally in this audience right now that had experienced at different times in their life, whether they were children with parents, teachers, mentors, people in their life, whether they was with, as they begin to be grown and as they experienced maybe rejection and or abandonment from, from relationships to people, the Lord said that some places in your hearts have you have been held in a black hole, like at a black hole of abandonment, a place of confinement to where you felt absolutely constricted, 
to where you felt like that you had grown to a certain place, but there was something that you didn't even realize what it was that was constricting you and confining you and that you were not able to quite break through from that spot. The Lord said today is a day of breakthrough for you, that you are breaking through, that that, that, that moment that we experienced a little bit earlier when there was complete joy in the room, the Lord began to show me about a river and about light, how light and water flows exactly. It's not an, there's not, that's not on the screen by accident. That is not, that's very, very prophetic. Light and water flows exactly the same way. And what the Lord began to show me was a picture that as we begin to speak, the Lord is actually putting His Word in your mouth. He's going to put it in your own lips. The, lo- the voice of faith, the Word of the Lord will be released from your own lips, but it'll be like light and like water. He said that rivers of living water, this is for this house, this is for this region, This is for this land, that rivers of living water, living water flow out of your belly. What that living water does is is you actually have the ability, Josh, when that water comes out of your mouth, that river, that it takes the shape that we begin to speak. Whatever, like an artist, like he was talking about, that when you can literally speak those words, you're like an artisan that takes something liquid and begins to form it and shape it and give it life. That you can speak into the very situations wherever you find yourself, no matter the darkness, that light and life flow out of you and literally begin, you can speak into a life where hurt, where despair, where discouragement, And you can begin to give them formation. Paul actually prayed and he said, I pray for you Galatians until Christ be formed in you. His words were literally speaking formation. They were giving shape. They were giving image to the life that he has designed for us. And he wants you It's not just for Josh. That's not just for Robin. That's for Chris. Is that right? I remember I only met you once, but that's for Chris. That's for Chris, that Chris can speak and begin to shape and form according to life. He said, I pray that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants you to be able to speak abundance into every atmosphere that you walk into. Every genre, every dimension that your foot sets, no matter what that place was called before your foot set down. Remember the land of Canaan? Do you remember the land of Canaan that was the promised land? Do you realize that in the time of Noah, that Canaan, there was an an atrocity that happened. And the Bible said, cursed be Canaan because of what his father Ham did. Canaan was a land that was called cursed. Think about this. Canaan was a land that was called cursed until a man named Abram set his foot down in it. And as soon as he set his foot down in that land, what was once known as cursed was immediately transformed by the light that was in him and it became a land called promise. What have you seen in your life? 
that has been that black. The Lord's telling us today, it's breakthrough time. It's breakout time. Can you see it? Can you hear it? It's breakout time. Light breaks forth and takes on image and takes on shape and takes on form. And you are the agent that he has designed. That's why you're sitting in this room right now. You are the agent that he has anointed to be able to create the realities of heaven on the earth where you walk. The days are here. The time is now. Do not miss this time of visitation. Do not despise a small beginning. Life and life abundantly. Just like light, just like water, your words, your thoughts, your deeds, and your action will create and build and strengthen and shape the atmosphere where your foot sets. That begins now. It's time now. Amen. Amen. Couple things here on that. I'll, uh, so much happening. Uh, just confirming some things, Robin. And uh, the, there's just such breakthrough in the room today. The whole, just the that moment that we hit earlier, and and it just, just this is what breakthrough sounds like. This is what breakthrough sounds like. And such a such a moment of breakout breakthrough. Yeah. And then. Um, that word he's that word he's saying of that the that that framework the forming the forming of that the forming of that the words of the lord are seeds framing everything he says to you is framing your world because he what hebrews chapter number 11 the worlds were framed by the word by the word of god so his words frame worlds so everything he speaks in you, Luke 19, they were thinking one way, and he said, but then he told them this story to change their perspective. Everything he speaks to you is a seed into your world to help frame your world. Continue to speak what he's already spoken. Continue to speak what he's saying in decreeing that in your world. And then, and then that uh, the word of abandon, like black holes, abandoned in in previous relationship and previous things and and I felt I felt earlier I felt earlier that that, that there's there's probably a couple people in the room and we're, I'm gonna pray I, I feel like there's a couple people in the room that need a that need a freedom from a wound that you've held on to in a previous abandonment day in a previous abandonment day and I, I don't want to go into too much detail on it but there, there's there's a couple of people in the room, and the Lord is you're not gonna hang, you're not gonna have to hang on to the molestation anymore, and the Lord is gonna just bring a freedom, and it, so so sometimes something happened decades ago, and it's still it's still an open wound in you, and the Lord is just there's there's a previous black hole of abandonment of something that happened to you. And the Lord is, the Lord is, just, he's just, I just, he's just sewing that up. He's just sewing that up. And there's so many been, so many broken pieces of your life that have stemmed from those incidents. And the Lord is saying, you have no idea how strong my mend is over your life. He binds up the brokenhearted. He mends it. He mends it. He's near to the brokenhearted. And there's there's some specific wounds that you've that you've held on to, not because you wanted to hang on to them, just because there's something that never got dealt with by the Father, and maybe you were in a previous day and you didn't even know how to give that to Him. But today the Lord is saying, "Just give that to me. I'm going to take that too, and I'm going to heal that. I'm going to heal that." And I felt like when Robin was saying that and he started talking about the black hole of abandonment, I felt like because I felt that earlier. 
not black hole of abandonment, but I felt that earlier about a couple people just being healed of that. And so I'm not going to ask you to come forward and because because that not and if I did, it wouldn't be to embarrass. It would be for freedom. But I'm believing for freedom where you are now. I'm believing for freedom where you are now. And I felt specifically, is there? And I know this. We haven't heard all the testimonies of the house, but there's also another in the house that you've overcame. You you were one you were once molested and you overcame that and you have a testimony of victory. You have a testimony of victory of what the enemy intended for evil and God and God has brought you into victory over that. And I and I felt that in my spirit. I felt that in my spirit for that, or I felt that direction for that. And and I don't and I know there's a lot of stories in the room and and so and so I have to be careful here but I want I want that person I want I want that person you say I, I've I've got a te- and I don't necessarily we don't need to hear the testimony today but I just want you to come and I want you to pray over the people because you've God's brought you to a position of victory out of that he brought you into a position of victory out of that and I want you to pray that over the people so that so that you so that you could uh, so that not not just so that you could listen it's not about your story right now it's about you just releasing where you came from and that testimony of victory you're releasing that into the atmosphere not necessarily to tell your story but so that you can pray that and release that because I'm believing there's a couple people in the room that need that need that freedom that God's allowed you to experience because you you don't hang on to it anymore but he, but, he, but he wiped it away and you've been healed of that. And I want you to pray. I want you to pray over people. So, so if, if we can, and, and I'm not, again, I'm gonna be very careful here, but I, I, I would like that person to come and I want them to pray. Is it you? Okay. I thank, I thank you, Father, for freedom. I thank you whenever I felt abandoned and I felt like I didn't matter that you were there. There, you were there with your arms of love wrapped around me and you made my words count. When I didn't feel like, I felt like no one heard me, but you did, Father. You heard my cry. You heard my voice. Father, you heard my cry and you showed me love. You showed me love. When I didn't feel it, you showed me love, Father. You said, you matter. I love you no matter what. And Father, when I felt like my life didn't matter and I didn't feel like living even, no one would even know if I was gone. You said, you matter. I dreamed a dream for you, Angela. I dreamed a dream over you. I had a purpose. I had a plan for you. That you will live. You will not die. You will live and you will tell the story and you will bring up others. And that that you will show them the love. Father, I thank you for a love that is like no other. I thank you for a love that is like no other love. A love that picks you up out of the very deep depression. It picks you up out of the very deep depression and says, come on, baby, I have more for you. Come on, my beloved. This is not what I have planned for you. I have better things for you than this. This is not where I called you to live. I called you to live in life and life more abundantly. Get up out of that pit of despair. Get up out of that pit of loneliness. Out of that. (laughs) Get up out of that, my girl. I have you. I have a life for you. I have a plan for you. I have daughters for you to raise. I have sons for you to raise. You are my beloved and I want you. I long for you. I long for you to feel the love. I love I love deeper than you've ever known. I thank you, Father, for that. I thank you, Father, for that. And I just pray over anyone here that is suffering with any kind of depression or anxiety from something that someone else did that was not their fault, but they blame themselves because that's what we do. We blame ourselves. We are not to blame. We did not do this. God did not do this. This was another person's choice. But Father, that we we know that you love us. I pray over these any of these women that are feeling this way or even men, Father, that they 
they know your love today, that they rise up and say, I will serve the Lord and I will know his love in a deep, deep way. I thank you for that, Father. Depression, you have to go. And anxiety, you have to go. Our life is not ours, it's his. Our life is not ours, it's his. We will rise up in who we are. We will know, we will see his face and we will see our reflection in his eyes and we will know that we are his. We are his. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Um, you are more than whatever happened to you. And whatever happened to you happened to you, unfortunately, for a reason. But God will build you from that. And he will, he will receive the glory. And he will bring people to him through your story. So rise up. Know that he is faithful. Know that he has you. Know that he was there. He felt your pain. He feels your pain today. But he has so much more for you. So rise up. Be warriors. Be warriors for God because he is on your side. Father, I thank you that you are good, good Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are there at every corner, in every low place, in every depth, at the darkest of places. You said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I thank you, Lord, that you lift our chins up to see you, a good father. I thank you, Lord, that you you fix our focus on who you are. I thank you, Lord, that your protection is higher than any protection and that we are always protected and we always have been protected. Lord, I just ask that in this moment that you would remove Lord, I ask that you remove that insecurity. Lord, I ask that you take away that shame. Lord, I ask that you take away that condemnation. And Lord, I thank you for freedom in this room right now. I thank you for freedom, for freedom in you, Jesus. I thank you for freedom. Keep lifting, keep lifting, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until it breaks. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until it breaks. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for freedom in this room right now. Thank you for freedom in this room right now, Jesus. We thank you for freedom, Jesus. We thank you for freedom. I just want to declare the joy of the Lord is all of our strengths. And what a heart of thanksgiving we have collectively 
I just, I just sense the heart of thanksgiving in this room so strongly. Even in the midst of everything we're going through, we have hearts that are full of thanksgiving. And this thanksgiving is a beautiful, beautiful, fragrant offering to the Lord. And just thank you, everybody that is giving thanksgiving and gratitude back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, because we couldn't be where we are without Him. We couldn't be anywhere without Him. So we just praise You, Jesus. We thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. We praise You for everything You are and everything You've done. Thank You, Jesus. So so I just wanna say that during those times, God will tell you that you have to forgive the person that hurt you. So please forgive them and then embrace His love. And He will walk you through the whole process. But open your hearts to His love and forgive. So we release forgiveness in this room for every person, for every individual, man or woman. And we release forgiveness, Father. And we open our our hearts to your love and we forgive them. We don't hold it in our hearts anymore. And we have embraced your love like never before. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing and what you continue to do for us. Thank you for never leaving us, even in those dark moments when we didn't know you were there and you were, you were just there holding us and protecting us and shielding us from the, the enemy, the evil one who wanted to, who seek to destroy our life. But you had greater, you had so much greater for us and you continue to just pour out your spirit and your love on us. No matter what has happened in the past and what will come, Lord, you're there and you're fighting for us. You're advocating for us through your spirit. Thank you. Help us to forgive. Help us to just walk into what you have for us. Help us to let go of those traumas and those things that that we thought would never leave us. But you just, you have so much more. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us and the way that you fight for us and the ways that we can't even see but we just we just know because we know your character we know who you are we know what you've done before and we thank you for in those moments that we can look back and say you did that for me you pulled me out of that moment that I never thought I would escape the evil you said no I'm setting you right here on this rock you're gonna stand on me and I'm gonna carry you out of everything that the enemy meant to harm you thank you Lord Thank you for healing and restoring us and closing up those wounds. Thank you. you can look past, when you get to a place where you can look past this entire world and everything in it, and you can just put that, see past it, and get to put it at his feet, he will put you on a firm foundation and make all things new and it will all you will be a brand new person and it will it will be easy to stand up and start climbing and and I just pray right now that he put you on a firm foundation and make all things new in Jesus name
was a moment when I didn't understand any of it. And the shame and the guilt was so deep. It was deep. And I didn't have the mother and the father. But God told me, I am your father. You will lack no good thing. You are not weird. You are not less than. You are my daughter. Any one of you that are going through this, you are his daughter. You are his son. Don't you let the enemy tell you any different ever. Ever. You are loved and valued more than you will ever, ever even know. Shame and condemnation is not our portion. It is not. You are loved. Embrace his love. He is there to embrace you in every moment in everything he was there we couldn't recognize it but he was there and it broke his heart it was not his will but he what does it say he will make it everything that was meant to harm us it will be for a better good so I just want to tell you don't Hold the shame and the condemnation and think that you are less than because you're not. You are jewels. You are jewels and you are loved deeper. You are going to be able to go out and you are going to be that person that someone else needs. So don't close yourself up to that. Be the light. Be the light. I thank you, Jesus, for everyone in this room that has ever felt unloved. They are loved. They are loved and they are valued more than they ever, ever know. And I give you honor and glory for what you're going to do in each one of their lives. Thank you, Jesus. If, that's, if those prayers are impacting you, just receive what the Lord's doing in you. And don't think because it's all women that prayed because the Lord, revealed, I felt like it was, there, was one, there was at least one male and one, one female that, that needed that healing. And then I felt that that was even confirmed. And so the Lord's, the Lord's, doing, the Lord's doing something and, and he's given you the invitation just to let it all go and receive the healing of the Lord there. Receive the healing of the Lord there. No more black holes of abandonment. Wholeness. That's his dream for you. Wholeness and completion. Wholeness and completion. Absolutely. Absolutely. The God's doing such amazing things. Amazing things. I don't know. Uh, Haley, you're going to go back. We're going to. Let's do that. Let's. We're gonna worship right here, just together. Just stand with me. This is this is the 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 last piece of the puzzle. The last piece of the puzzle for it, maybe. Huh? Hold on. So, I, I was in a meeting yesterday, and um, we kind of all collectively had an idea of what the meeting we thought what the meeting was gonna be about. We thought it was for the nation, for the regions, for the, the times and the seasons. And, um, but it was a Holy Spirit meeting. And so we got in there and we let him have the meeting. And um, that was not what he was intending at all. In fact, what happened was just what happened here today. Words came and that's what just went back and forth. It was like, you get a word, you get a word, you get a word. But the Lord was just expressing his love in such a beautiful, tender way. And um, it kind of hit us collectively that this was for the nation. This was for the region. 
So just because we didn't mention the region, just because we didn't mention the nation, the Lord is working on each one of us individually in our hearts. And we're the ones that go out. We're the ones that are sent out to reach the lost. And so what happened in this room today wasn't just for us. This was for so many people in our region and so many people. And so I just thank God for doing what he's done in this room today. And just, you guys, it's bigger than you even know. What happened today is so much bigger than you even know. And the Lord has taken it even a step further than that. He's, he's taking these things that happened, these things that were broken off, and he's, he's allowing that to, to really seep through to your bloodline, all right, to your children, to the generations after you, but also he's going back in time. He's redeeming those generations and that bloodline and making everything holy and everything pure. And I just thank you, Lord, for what you've done in this house today. During the worship, I saw a vision and it was every person in this room was just like a shining light just like beaming up and we were all singing in that moment and it was just like so that all I could hear was everyone around me I couldn't even hardly hear the music and it was so beautiful and it was like angels just singing and he's he wasn't just like oh you know like we want to look up and hear it was like we were that light we were that so he wasn't in the room he was in all of us in that moment so I want to share that
Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that has absolutely cocooned this room. Lord, and, and thank you for transformation. Thank you for renewal in thought. Thank you for renewal in mind, renewal in spirit. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we will not be slaves of our own soulish thinking, but Lord, we will be, we will be absolutely fixed absolutely fixed positionally in you to think like you, to speak like you, God, to decree like you. I thank you, Father, for doing it. I thank you, God, that when they come here, God, we don't have church to offer anybody, but we have Jesus to offer everyone. God, that we don't have religion to offer anybody, but we have, we have Abba. We have Abba and we've got everything. We've got everything, Father, and I thank you, Lord, for people that are just coming into such such agreement, such such agreement, Lord, with what you're breathing and speaking into their life, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you have filled this place today with the bright ones. Lord, that they are the bright ones. Now let them, God, be empowered to illuminate the world around them. Lord, as they are light, because you are light. Lord, as you are light for all humanity, so are they. Light for all humanity, God. And I thank you, God, that, Lord, that they will go and illuminate the job sites. They're going to illuminate, God, the office space. They're going to illuminate, God. They're going to illuminate social media, God. I thank you that they were going to come into alignment with that and illuminate social media, illuminate social media. They're going to illuminate the world around them in every facet in every arena in every degree because the darkness cannot comprehend the darkness cannot comprehend the light the bright ones that they are so father I thank you God that the bright ones are assembled here God the bright ones are assembled here and they're empowered to illuminate everywhere that they go everywhere that they put their foot everywhere that they got everywhere that every direction that they speak into God that they will illuminate the darkness God, and I thank you, Lord, for it. I thank you that we're not a people that will focus on darkness. We are a people that magnify light. And God, I thank you, God, for the magnified ones, God, the magnified one on the inside of us that is magnifying the illumination of the planet, the illumination of the cosmos. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. God, I thank you, Lord, that nothing that you wanted to do today is, is left undone. Lord, I thank you, God. I just decree nothing the Father wanted to do today is undone, but everything the enemy wanted to accomplish has been undone and unraveled. So I thank you, God, for that happening today. Thank you for encouragement. I thank you for healing. I thank you for the uplifting of Holy Spirit in this place. I give you glory. If it was good, it was you. So I thank you for your goodness that drips in this room. And I give you glory for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Uh, well, if you came for church, we didn't give you that. But if you came for Jesus, I trust that you found him. I trust that you found him. I thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I don't know what you thought it was supposed to look like, but this was exactly what it was supposed to look like today. This won't be what it looks like next week, but it'll look like Jesus. It'll look like Jesus. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for just being obedient to the flow. Thank you. We have an offering bucket up here. Thank you for giving. Thank you for your obedience.